Uh, we'd like to ask uh, Jimmy Durham to join us uh, at the podium. And Jimmy, uh, if you would, uh, I've asked Jimmy just to say a few words. Uh, Jimmy, we've gotten to know here at the college, and I'm sure our faculty, Patrick, uh, other faculty members have gotten to know him too. Mm -hmm. You know, I've had an opportunity and been blessed, too, to get to know Jimmy and his parents. Uh, JB and Liz, would you all sort of stand up and be recognized? Uh, but, you know, Jimmy will talk about sort of what he went through, but an inspiration for all of us. Uh, uh, he's uh, graduating now this semester. Very proud of you, Jimmy, and I'm proud to call you a friend also. Uh, from one gym to the other, so. Yes, sir. Jim? Jim, Jim's work. That's right. That's right. And literally, two's better than one. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but I go, I have to stand over here because I'm blind out of my left eye so that way I can see everyone so that way you are important. I'm not just talking to the board. Um, but as he said, my name is Jimmy. I have a TBI. Um, most of y'all know what that is. is traumatic brain injury. I have an STBI, severe traumatic brain injury. The left side of my brain is extremely damaged. I'm blind, like I said, out of this side. My whole face crushed, but stayed together. The bones didn't move, but my whole face was fractured. Um, this was September 22nd, 2011. Um, I was going home at 9.30 at night. It'd be similar to going down 23rd to 98. And a lady was trying to go on the highway. Well, she didn't obviously look at the light the right way. She ran the light, and people, me and my mother's like, my body flew off and went to a light pole. My helmet flew off and went 200 yards away, and my heart stopped. Um, they, my parents lost me multiple times. Uh, I was in a coma for five weeks, and they just came in. They took half my skull out. They were going off numbers. Um, it, there was a very, very high odd of me ever waking up. They said nine to 23 years, if that, just pray. And the doctor, Dr. Parr, even said, it's not up to us, it's up to James and God. And James can't do this right now. It's all up to God. And he can hear you all just constantly pray. We're just workers for him. We're just doing what he wants us to do. And one thing, like for example, I don't have any scars. Um, all I was wearing was a helmet, a golf shirt, and some shorts. I was taking my employees out to dinner. I don't have any scars. I have scars, obviously, from surgery. Um, I don't have any from the road wreck. My whole body is supposed to be completely torn up. And it's not because it's not just a memory. It's actually what happens real. My grandfather called me, and I have a old name, Opa. He called me, and he sat me down. I was like, i got to get my bike. And I got up, and he goes, no, sit down. He said, I sat right down behind him, and he started giving me a back massage. And he got extremely warm, and we just shot up in the sky. And I saw the bike, and then a minute it was and his name was Opa, and this is his wife, Betty. I want to introduce my grandmother. She's here, and this was amazing thing. <laughs> when we were sitting up in the clouds, and it was extremely warm. My dog, the only dog I've ever had in my life, Bull, an English Springer Spaniel, came up next to me, and I was like, Bull, what are you doing here? No way. He's wagging his tail. I pet him. And then my buddy Bryson, who died from motocross in high school, I was like, Bryson, what are you doing with my dog? He's like, This is my dog now. We love them, and bikes killed me, I won't let them kill you. It's not your time to go yet. Please tell your family and my family that I love y'all and watch y'all every single day. And then Opa, my grandfather, said the same thing. He goes, tell Betty I love her and our whole entire family. I can't wait to see y'all. And then my dad's great-grandfather, Pops, pulled up in a Chevy C10 truck. And I was like, no way. He goes, it's not your time, James. Get in here and I'll drive you home. And immediately I was like, if my dad sees me driving with you, he's going to be so mad. This is not going to work. And then... His wife, grandmother, grandma, my dad's grandma, these are my great grandparents, came up with their famous chocolate cake and she goes, eat this and it'll bring you back. It's not your time to go yet. And then she brought out a car and I haven't seen since I was literally four years old. It was about this big, it was a ghost special car. She goes, play with this. When the time is right, you'll come back. It's not your time yet. And like I said, I was gone for about five weeks. Uh, my parents lost me multiple times. I was up to a machine. And then on October 26, my, family, my room was the ER room. I had 12 surgeries. The rule was you can be in there, you can't fall asleep, you can't be on the phone, and you have to leave. And my parents, obviously my brother and sister aren't here today, they could make it. But we all have a supporting beautiful family, and I just want you all not only to meet my parents, I'm, I'm speaking of my brother and sister as well, they never left. They slept in the emergency room with me. When I ran, they came and combed my hair, we love you. Um, we're so sorry if they would comb my hair. My sister would grab my hand and goes, I want to let you know how much I love you. My brother would do the same thing, would not leave my side. And when my sister did that on the October 26th, I just randomly woke up. And the doctors were like, okay, this is very amazing. He's supposed to be handicapped for everyone, never be able to walk in. It would take him three years minimal just to make noise. He'll never be able to talk again. He won't remember anyone or anything from his past or his future. And he'll be hospitalized forever, feeding through a tube. 
And my parents said, okay, that's fine. At least we can see his eyes. So during, you know, my family coming in, like for example, I'm Liz, I'm your mom. When we're down in the elevator. We're going to check all the metal because I have metal in my head, I have metal in my leg, my whole left leg broke. Um, I leaned over and I go, nah, be quiet. She goes, no way, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great, be quiet. <laughs>
tier to go back to my first one and get my skull put back in. And I made sure that it was the actual skull. I made him show me. I was like, what are you putting in there? Because you have know, a wallet. I was really sure. So this is the first one I've ever had done of my brain. Obviously, I just want to see what it looks like. I can imagine, but obviously, my imagine is different than everyone else. It's only halfway there. When I showed this, this is the picture of it because the first time I see my brain, it showed a heart. The very first part of your brain. Your brain is bigger. Yeah, my brain is bigger. That's true. 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 That's true.